It's been one week since the brand new M1 IMAX have hit the streets. And what's really cool about this is this is the first product to be designed from the ground up to take advantage of that new Apple computer silicon. So how is it holding up? Is it worth the hype? Or is this just a pretty looking computer that ultimately fails to deliver? Let's find out. And while we're finding out, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Squarespace. What's up, everyone? I'm the Everyday Dad, and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. Now, I know that I said that this orange one Apple is letting me borrow would be replaced by my silver one that I personally purchased, and it is here. It was delivered. However, my wife kind of took ownership of the silver one, and it hasn't made it downstairs uh, since we got it in here. It looks really nice, looks very clean and professional, but we will still be using the orange one today. So first up, let's cover the ordering options and specs if you haven't kept up on all of the hottest of the M1 coverage. The M1 iMacs come in a few spec options. The cheapest base model will cost $12.99. That version comes with a few less color options, the 8-core M1 CPU, 7-core GPU, like what is found in the MacBook Air base model, 8 gigabytes of unified memory, 256 gigabytes of storage, two Thunderbolt ports, and whew, that was a lot to say. I tried to say it all in one breath, but I'm just a mere mortal. Some things that I've seen floating around the internet, but I can't personally prove, also show that that model has a slightly less beefing cooling system as opposed to the higher end models. The next base model costs $14.99. It comes with the same CPU. However, that model will have the full eight core GPU. It'll have the same memory, the same storage, but this one will have four, oh, you can't see it. This one will have four ports, two Thunderbolt and two USB. Plus, this model will have gigabit ethernet built into the charging port, and you'll get the new Magic Keyboard with Touch ID on that higher end model. You can take that model and you can spec it up to 16 gigabytes unified memory and a two terabyte solid state drive running you $24.99, which yes, that is kind of expensive. Both computers, no matter what model you get, both will come with a very nice 4.5K retina panel and don't sleep on that retina panel, y'all. I'm telling you, we'll see more about it in a second, but I'm telling you. So it's been a week, and the way that I like to do these follow-up videos is simply talk about what I've liked and what I haven't liked in that time frame. And I've put this through some good, solid use in the past week. So let's start off with the dislikes, because while I actually am very positive on this computer, and you'll obviously see that in a second as you continue to watch this, it's not perfect. And what makes the negatives more negative is it's really close to being so. First off, and my biggest problem with the iMac is unlike maybe the Mac Mini or the M1 MacBooks, this is obviously a desktop computer. And for a desktop like main primary device, I would have really liked to have seen at least 32 gigabytes of unified memory as an option. Now I know that this is replacing the 21.5 inch iMac and that version also only went up to 16 gigabytes of memory. I mean, I get that, but I don't think that we should be so attached to the past that we have to recreate our products one for one. I think doubling the memory to 32 gigabytes would have been pricey sure, but making that an option would have elevated this from a very good, very value packed computer to one of the best values in computing for the size and power. And it is kind of already that anyway, but it would have been nice to have it more so. The next thing I haven't liked is how top heavy the computer is. Yes, Apple wants to make this as small and light as possible, which honestly, they've done a remarkable job. But when moving the iMac around, it feels more unstable than I'd like. And oh, see, even right there. Maybe I'm the weird one and I shouldn't move my computers around so much, but if you move it with the base, like if you're moving it around on a table, it can make it tip a bit. And then we already saw the way that this monitor is anchored to the base, it can fall back exacerbating this. I've almost legit knocked this over a few times, just repositioning it on my desk. I didn't have to mess around to recreate that here for this video. It's not a deal breaker, just be careful when you're moving it, but it is absolutely something I haven't liked. The third and the last thing that I've disliked about the M1 iMac is kind of weird weird that I'm going to talk about this from an M1 computer. The fan noise definitely exists here, and this is absolutely a small problem because it's not terrible. In fact, if this was made in isolation and this was the only M1 Mac, it would be class leading, but it's not. The other M1 computers have pretty much the same internals, but I don't hear a peep out of them. The Mac Mini is literally the quietest computer that I've ever heard of, and the MacBook Air, it doesn't even have a fan, so technically it can't even make any noise. This does have some fan noise. You can hear it. It's not terrible, there are worse things out there. Either those fans are louder because this gets warmer, or because it's just the way that this is so thin, it makes the fans a little louder. I don't know which one of those, but you don't really want either of those. Okay, so three nitpicks standing up against this redesigned behemoth of value. So if I called it a behemoth of value, Gary, what are some things that you've liked? Now, I was gonna include a bit here where I like unrolled a piece of paper that went all the way over the desk, but I didn't wanna waste that much paper. That's not very environmentally friendly. So just imagine, 
I'm like unrolling a scroll of paper of things I like, and it rolls over the desk because there is a ton to like about the M1 iMac, an actual ton. First off, I really just like the whole new body design. One of the things that I didn't like about using an iMac Pro for a couple of years was just how big and how much space it took up. Sure, it was powerful for the time. It also had a huge display and it was a convenient all-in-one device, but dang, it was massive, it was heavy, and it was really hard to maneuver around my house if I needed to move offices or when we moved houses. We moved twice while I had the iMac, and each time, that sucked. The new M1 is light, agile, crazy small, and because of the redesign lessening the bezels, the screen actually feels bigger than it is. And I know that sounds crazy and sounds like an Apple fanboy trying to justify a smaller screen to himself. I get that. But check one of these out in person and you'll see what I'm talking about. But let's turn this back around because the back, this part is the actually the best looking part of the computer. The redesign lets this fit into almost any space in your house from office to kitchen to anywhere really. The colors are a nice touch and something that I think can be overlooked especially in the computer space is how nice and comforting it is to actually have your computer and all the ancillary equipment be coordinated. And it's not just Apple that makes this an awesome option. Since personally moving to the unified Logitech MX Master keys and mouse, it's been nice having two devices that were designed to be used together. And yes, the Magic Mouse and Keyboard do the same kind of thing for the iMac, even though they were designed first. Everything's designed to work together really well. The next thing I've really liked about the M1 iMac is the value for dollar. When we did our comparison video between this and the Mac Mini, we priced it all out and to get roughly the same capabilities out of the Mac Mini, it would cost the same as the iMac. It would cost roughly the same as the iMac because that would include more cables, more junk, and more mess having to make it worse while having a less impressive display. The M1 iMac at any of the levels, personally I think $1499 is the value sweet spot, it's probably the best value on the computer market today especially if you don't already have a keyboard, a mouse, or a monitor in your house that you want to use. This just has everything you need in the box. It's super simple to set up, and while $14.99 is not cheap, for what you get, I think this is priced correctly, especially if you start looking to build your own PC or look for a powerful laptop to be the hub of your system. Having a full wireless system, that's not cheap. I think it's also important, and I want you to realize that you can absolutely put a price tag on convenience, and this, along with the other iMacs, put convenience center stage. It's literally plug one cable and hit power and everything works. And that cable is magnetic. You just plug it in. It's just one cable. Something that I'm legitimately shocked at is how good the speakers are. Look, I didn't expect the speakers to be bad. Apple generally does a very good job. Some would say the best job at designing speakers for their computers. The MacBook Pro 16 is a real standout in that regard. Like the MacBook Pro 16 has legendary speakers, but the M1 iMac speakers are awesome. I'm not going to be able to directly let you experience it, but the first time I turned on the iMac and the Apple initializing sound happened, it just has so much more bass. I could tell that this was going to be something special. Honestly, unless you are a huge audio snob and need even beefier external computer speakers, I think that these are good enough to be your only speakers. They have a serious amount of bass. The audio is super crisp when it comes out, and I'm not an audiophile. Speakers are not my bag, baby. Other than to say that Apple is not blowing smoke at you with marketing jargon. They actually did something they did something very good with these speakers. Leading into the next thing, the camera. Apple finally put a 1080p camera into one of their desktop computers, and much like the speakers, this camera is way better than it has any right to be. Obviously won't replace a bigger camera like the one we are using right now if you use one of those as your webcam or streaming camera, but if you were using one of those smaller dedicated webcams, this would absolutely replace any need for that. Cameras like those tend to struggle in lighting like this that we're gonna find in the studio here is normally just too intense for those to handle, but I find that the IMAX camera holds up pretty darn well, and I think that this might be the best camera that I've seen on an Apple computer thus far. And what's cool about this is as we finish out this trinity of audio camera, back to audio again, Trinities can be weird, I guess. The microphones on the iMac are another thing that absolutely live up to the hype. Now, while I may not be a speaker audio snob, I am kind of a vocal audio snob. That's what being on YouTube for four years will do to you. We spend way too long listening to ourselves talk, and the next thing you know, you hear yourself talk, you're like, man, that doesn't sound too good. The next thing you know, you spend way too much money on microphones and expensive preamp stuff. As a vocal audio snob, these microphones are actually really good. I don't know if it's the microphone array itself or if Apple is doing some kind of post-processing to it under the hood, 
It's probably a combination of both, but the audio on this computer is the best I've ever heard on a computer. Not only are voices very crisp, very clear, very good for meetings, it also does a remarkable job at cutting out background noise. Listen, listen to this. So this is how it sounds with the brand new M1 iMac from Apple. We actually have my dehumidifier going at full blast right over there. And so one of the things I want you to pay attention to is how well this does canceling that noise out. Yeah, you can still hear it, but if you're in a meeting like in your house, there's always noises in your house, right? So I think one of the big things about the iMac that's so good is the camera's fantastic, the microphone's great, but the microphones are great even when there's noise going on. Not too shabby. That last clip was from the Mac Mini versus iMac video from last week, and I'm still impressed with how good that sounds, even though my very loud and very annoying dehumidifier was going the whole time. I mean, I work out of a basement, we gotta have the dehumidifier going or all this stuff's gonna get ruined. So if you are working from home or an office manager looking to kit out employees with the best way to manage virtual meetings, I have to give it to Apple here. This is, this iMac is the best virtual work platform I think I've ever seen. Oh, I guess we should talk about the power too, because I actually like that too. It has the M1 processor, which means it's more powerful than a computer of this size should be. It's got single core performance that rivals 11th gen Intel, and it's got multi-core performance that doesn't meet AMD, but competes very respectably to it, especially when it comes to how much power this is actually drawing. I am looking forward to seeing what the new M1X or M2 processors can do, but what we've currently got is very impressive, and you'll not want for power if you buy an M1 iMac. And here's another couple quick fire things that I've also liked. The Magic Keyboard with Touch ID is an awesome addition. I've been wanting this capability for years. So it's nice to see that they figured out a way to make the connection secure over the air and allow you to do all of your verifications from your keyboard. I also like the angle of the display. I was kind of concerned that you wouldn't be able to articulate this as much as somebody might need to, but for me, it's been very comfortable to use and very easy to get into place. And something else that Apple doesn't get enough credit for is I like the setup process for the iMac. It was very well laid out and it puts a priority on accessibility. And that I think that's just such a genius move. And I hope more companies take a page out of Apple's book by making sure every single one of your customers feels welcomed and that they are able to get the best experience out of their machine without having to dig through complicated menus or be hassled to make the computer work in the way they need it. Right up front, let them set the computer up how they need it. But at the end of the day, so what, right? Is this newest iMac, the first Apple computer built from the ground up for Apple's own processors worth buying? Yes, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. No kidding, I think this is the best value in computing right now. Yes, I will personally still use my Mac Mini because I already have a keyboard and display setup that I personally want to use. If I didn't and I was moving from a laptop to a desktop or I didn't make YouTube videos and I didn't need that much real estate for video editing, I would be perfectly fine with this computer and its 24 inch display. The power isn't all that different from what we've already seen out of Apple and their M1, but that's not really the point of this smallest iMac. This isn't really supposed to be the ultra powered high end designer's dream computer. This computer is supposed to take all of the hassle out of computer ownership. You get a comprehensive, usable package for a reasonable price. No matter how much you spend on this, you will get a comprehensive, usable package. And there just isn't anything else out there that's not the Mac Mini, which competes with this iMac on power, value, and price. This is about being the inviting family computer to FaceTime with grandma. And you know what? I think Apple did a great job here. I think Apple did a great job here. And while it's not perfect, this is definitely a computer that I would recommend. Thanks to today's sponsor, Squarespace, you can create your own very beautiful website. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a professional website, online store, or portfolio. It's so easy to claim a domain slash URL, create a custom site that matches your style and brings your ideas to life. Head on over to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, head on over to squarespace.com slash everyday dad to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And thank you for watching.